And Pedro, if, if uh, having had this sort of an intense experience and having developed in that time probably a pretty intensive relationship with the people that you were going through this with, how did that or did that not affect relationships in, say, the business world and also your personal life afterwards? Did you find that you had, a, say, a greater sense of compassion? Or, you know, you might also think, hey, I've been through this ordeal, and, you know, what are you complaining about when, <laughs> when you hear people that you're working with uh, sort of uh, complain about some of the ordeals that they faced? Um, it's, it's, uh, it's tough to say because I, I, I cannot uh, follow the traits of my, of my personality to what happened over there. I cannot say that I have, I have more compassion, compassion or that, that I am a better listener or that I have been a better father or a better manager or whatever because I went through this. And... Uh, and it's very difficult to me to say, well, it changed my life. This was a crucible. After that, I became completely another person. What I do say is that it is part of my life, and I have it with me. And, uh, and at that time, before the accident, I lived in Uruguay, and, and uh, I was just a very unresponsible Guy, as many of our 21-year-old uh, old guys at that time. At that time, I wanted to change the world. After my accident, I went back to my my parents. I started, I, I cannot say a new life, but I went back to school. I I started to work. I met my wife. Um, we raised a family. And then I came, even I came to to, to business school, so it, it definitely changed. It was it was uh, something that that it was a moment in which I changed my life, but maybe it was part of my maturation process. And also, it is true that the fact that I had that experience doesn't give me a, a blank check. You know, that doesn't allow me to do things that other people won't do it doesn't give me a different perspective of many things. It might give me a different perspective, but that doesn't mean that I don't have other mountains to climb, you know? And today, I suffer when my children go away, and I also have the same anguishes that many other people. I just a normal guy, you know? And the fact, again, the fact that we went over that mountain, that doesn't mean that we don't have other mountains to climb. And uh, and that happened to all of us, you know. Once you get over your mountain, welcome. You have another one to go, and, and that's life. Well, how about just one uh, sort of twist on that is, is you spent a lot of time, many years, with this experience mostly in your backpack, as you say. Um, is that because you found that other people related to you differently when they knew about this experience than if they just saw you as a, as a regular guy? No, because I wanted to live a normal life, you know, mm-hmm. and I felt that if I had this thing open, it was going to be very, very difficult. And uh, it just went naturally. It was not a, a decision that I decided I was not going to talk about this. But the fact is that when I came to business school, when I got my first job, when I got into the new neighborhood, I didn't come with the, with the staple here, I'm a survivor of the Andes. It just that didn't work that way. And, uh, and then people didn't ask me things. You know, that thing didn't, didn't come very easily. And that, I think, was, is very important because uh, it allowed me to, to, do, to live a normal life. You know, I, I worked, I, raised, I studied, I raised my family. And uh, I'm very happy to do that. And I don't know if I would have been able to do it if I had continued be speaking about this thing. Uh, the fact that I could put it away really allowed me to uh, live a normal life, which I think is very important. Yeah. Why don't you take a few questions from the audience? Yes. Uh, Jim Collins and other people have talked about uh, and written about uh, Admiral Stockdale, uh, the senior American officer at the Hanoi Hilton in North Vietnam during the Vietnam War. And the, the basic point that Stockdale made was the ones that didn't make it were the ones that were the optimists. The ones that did survive were the ones that were brutal realists. 
Did you see any of that in your experience? No, that was not our case. And uh, some of the strongest and more willing guys, those at, which at the very beginning work more, much more than others, two of the guys that went up in the mountain and spent a, a, a night in the open air, they died in the avalanche. There's no explanation for that. They would have been great team players. They would have probably made the group uh, hold much better. They might have walked out of the mountains before, or the, the guys that went, went now, you know? So I cannot say that we that survive are different from the guys that stay in the mountains. And I don't know why I saved my life and why the others didn't do it. But I cannot claim that we are different, that we are less optimistic or more pessimistic. And what I can say is that all of us, even those who did not come back, wanted to live and wanted to stay alive. And as long as they had the hope to live, they struggled for life. Uh, have you kept in touch with the people who were in the plane crash with you? And if you have, how has your experience of kind of dealing with having gone through this experience been different from theirs? With uh, my friends? Yes. The, yes, yes we are in touch. We all belong to a same group. We get together every year and we celebrate very much that we are still alive. Uh, books have been written on this thing. Uh, there's a film that has been done, a documentary has been done. Well, all those things also help us to, to be together. Um, some of them are, are speaking about this thing, others just kept it for themselves. I was among the ones who didn't speak about it until just recently. But uh, we all absolutely belong to, to the same group, and we enjoy very much getting together and, and partying, you know, because for us, this story is, is a wonderful story, you know, which, on the other hand, is very complicated to the relatives of, of our friends who did not come back, you know. The strange story, which I still have to work on it, is that we don't think about our friends, you know. We, in a way, they just feel that they are with us, you know, and then the we would have done what they did, so we are happy to be here and we don't feel any any remorse at all of the way we were able to get out of the mountain. Um, but group decision making, and I'm thinking particularly the decision to start eating your, your friends. Uh, I, I think it's very reasonable, rational, I would have been going for it, but I would think that there would be some others who would be violently against it. How, how do you reach an agreement? Was the captain saying, you know, this is what we need to do, or? No, that, that didn't happen at all, you know? Because uh, even when I hear people saying, I wouldn't do it, wouldn't have doing it, you know? I, I would have preferred to die. I say to that guy, you don't you're not know what you're speaking, what you're saying at all, you know? Because we all did that because we wanted to live, and we all wanted to live. So uh, some needed a little bit more rationalization and do uh, really think, but you want, to, you want to stay alive? Yes, well, you have to go and do it. And I, 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 it's, it's absolutely that way. It was not an issue for us over there. We, it, was, it was absolutely natural. The was the only were thing made that we, kind of by the, by the group or by individuals or they, they, we worked as a team, but we didn't have a six o'clock meeting, you know. <laughs> <laughs> it just happened, you know. It just happened. Uh, it, groups started to talk. We talk about it. It was important that some of the oldest guys would would agree on what we were doing, but. One day we encounter ourselves doing it, or one day we encounter ourselves that three of the guys had been chosen to be expeditionaries, and they would leave someday, you know? But uh, we didn't have a leader. 
the guy that would take the tough decisions. That, that didn't work that way. You know, we were, on the other hand, you know, we, we are, we are in, in that situation. Many people ask me, if, well, how important was that we were a, a rugby team? Or how important was that we had a education, you know? If we would have been soccer players, would that be the same? Or we would fought among ourselves and kill ourselves, you know? And I'm sure that it would have been the same. Because after 10, 15 days living in such an hostile environment, all your cultural belongings, all your, your cultural um, perjuicios, you know, yeah. the, the things that you thought before and biases and all that stuff falls apart and you are just there as a human being, you know? It doesn't matter who you were before. You're just a human being living with other human beings, surviving. And that is how it went go, you know? It really didn't matter if we were a rugby team, educated or not, soccer players. It was important that we were young and that we were healthy. I think so. It allowed us to stay more time, but our attitude, the things that we do, that, that we did, the way that we worked as a team, I think that probably it didn't matter at all. The fact that we were human beings wanting, wanting to live is what, what really mattered. Thanks very much for, for sharing your story. Appreciate it. Um, I, I had two questions. One, you spoke of the metaphor of climbing more mountains and putting it back into your backpack and taking it out. My first question is, how often do you do that? You know, is it sort of once a week? Is it once a year? Is it just sort of when you need some kind of inner strength? And the second different question is, um, how did this impact your view of, of the value of a human life? And I, I could see both sides. I could see seeing, you know, my best friend die next to me and thinking, gosh, life is so fleeting, it's meaningless, and we're just, you know, a tiny speck of dust in this great world. And then, but the flip side is you survived and, and sort of have, this, I imagine, this incredible yeah. sense of power getting through that. I'm not a model, so I don't do that, you know? It's not true that once per week I get with my friends and say, look the mountain, we, we overcome. Uh, so next time we're going to do it this way. It just happened. And now I, 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 I'm alive, and I, I live, and I go to business school, and, uh, and I strive through life, you know? And I have children, and I'm angry at my children, and, and I have a spouse, and uh, I just do a normal life. So I cannot give you an answer of how many times or weeks I, I go, I go into, into my mountain. That doesn't happen that way. And during my business life, I never talk about it. I don't know if I, how it had influence. I'm sure it has, you know. But it's not something that had completely uh, been coming back. I cannot say that I taken this decision because I went through that mountain. I just cannot say that. No? And of course, I'm very happy to be here. I'm very happy to be alive. I enjoy li uh, living. But I'm sure that I enjoy living as much as you are, as much as you do. Because we are, we are human beings. And even if you go through the worst ordeal, the day after, you just forgot it. You have to continue living. Okay. How did this experience change your faith and your spiritual life? Uh, I'm a believer, and I was a believer then. But uh, um, I really think that the way that God helped us was given us the strength to overcome the mountains. But I cannot claim to have seen God in the mountains. I, I cannot claim that, that I've been talking to God in the mountains. Although we prayed a lot, and we prayed for our families, and we prayed for ourselves, and we prayed for us, it was important that we still work. 
to, to get out of the mountain, you know? And, and working meant to do the things that we had to do, to feed on ourselves, to, to, to do water, just not to let you die, you know? And nobody stayed there praying, waiting for death. No, that was not the attitude that we had there. We just work hard. And, uh, and we were able to work hard because we, we, we had God on, on our behalf. But I don't mean, again, that if we were not Catholics or that we had another religion, or even if we had not religion at all, we would not have done it the same. I don't think that being a religious people was something that really influenced the final outcome. No, it has helped as the way, at the same way, it would have helped any, anyone else. That as, as the way I see it. Of course, if you ask my mother, he would say <laughs> a completely, it would, she would tell you a completely different story. And some of my friends do have a different perspective. Some of my friends do believe in more in a miracle, and others don't believe in God. So it's a, it's, it's a whole array of, of possibilities. In the hindsight, could you have done a few things differently to save lives of some of the 29 or to shorten 72 days? I'm sorry. Could you have done a few things differently to save some of the lives? Yes. 29 or... Well, absolutely. Uh, we uh, missed our way. The way was towards the east. If uh, the guys who went walking about 45 days before they went towards the west would have continued walking, they would have gotten out of the mountains much earlier and uh, two lives would have been saved. Uh, the other thing that we have been said is that if we had burned the airplane, maybe someone would have seen the smoke and would have found us. We never thought about that. But I don't know if we would have dared to do it because that would have meant burning our own house. You know, that was where we, we had everything that we had to do, you know. So it was a difficult situation. We have time for one more question. And then we can also go over and people can ask more questions. We have some food and drinks as well. Thank you again for sharing this amazing story with us. Uh, I would like to ask you, how is the transition after you were rescued to going back to normal life? And do you go back to that very moment of restarting your life again? Like, Excuse me? Uh, how is the transition yes. of going from rescue? Yes, yes. Uh, yes now yes, you realize yes. you are a survivor. Yes. To going back to normal life. Yes. And do you go back, how often do you go back to that very moment to remind yourself, you know, I'm alive, I, I should enjoy my life. Well, that, that's something that, that uh, you do when, when you meditate or when you think of what you, you're doing. It depends on the stage of your life that, that you're going through. But uh, again, I'm not a role model for that. And, uh, and what I believe is in that, in a way, my story goes beyond me, you know. It's, it's something that happened to me that I have in my backpack that I, I can share it. But I'm, I'm not a perfect guy. I, I don't, I, I, I cannot, I, I don't stay thinking of what we did and how important to, to I just live a normal life as everyone else do. What is important is, and let me have three minutes more, Mike, yeah. is that uh, many people ask me why I'm, I'm talking now or how was the process, you know, and the truth is that things, happened, you know? And uh, the fact is that when you are 56, you are think that you are in the middle of your life and you start thinking or looking at things in a, with a different perspective. And uh, I am, you know, looking things in a different perspective. And uh, I was asked about two years ago if I would like to participate in, a, in an interview uh, with, with all my friends, and I say no. They start asking me to, to, to do it. So what I did was ask my, my brothers and my children if they want me to participate in an interview. And to my surprise, they all said that yes, they would like to, to hear what I have to say. 
So I said, hey, maybe I should consider what I'm doing. <laughs> and I went to that interview, and I spent a, a great time. I, I love, enjoy, I enjoy very much talking about that. So I really thought that it, that's something that I might do in the future. And then uh, two, about two months later, I was in the mountains with my wife. I was looking the area where the plane crashed. And we had a guide. It was a woman in his mid-40s. And she came to me and said that uh, she had experienced a horrible ordeal and that her only child had committed suicide. And that the only reason why she was stay alive because our story provide her hope, you know? And I look at her and say, I'm not a prophet, huh? you know? What, what, what are you talking about? I was almost going to say that to her, but I decided to let her go, you know? And I realized that I, I had to leave that person with, with the hope that our story provide her, you know? So it really goes beyond myself. It's a story that happened to me and it could have happened to anyone of you, and I'm sure that every one of you would have done, would have done the same, you know? And, and uh, it gives a lot of hope to people, and that's why I start to talk about it. So it could really could, uh, give help, uh, hope to, to others. And the other thing that I learned, and I think that it's, it is important, is that we were in the mountain what we have been later on life. The guys that walk, at, walk us out of the mountains are our heroes. And they have continued doing heroic things. And the others that would stay at the plane and try to keep the morale and work for the team and as a team, I continue doing that for doing life. And that speaks about your style of leadership, you know? And that was very meaningful for me because I didn't walk out of the mountain, you know? I didn't put my, the group on my shoulders and walk out of the mountain. And when in my business life I was asked to do those type of things, like cutting, cutting throats and overkilling competition, and doing very uh, extraordinary things, I was not a very good leader. When, but when I had to talk to people and empower people and to, and to uh, uh, increase the morale of a group and, 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 and build a team, I, I was very successful there, you know? And the guys that were depressed in the mountains are still depressed now. <laughs> <laughs> you know? But that also talks you about what you are, what type of leaders you, you, you are, what type of leaders you want to... to to be and what are your limitations or restrictions and on what things you have to work on. But luckily, you are in a good business school. 